Hi, and welcome to this week's Cooking with Chris. Today, we're going to be cooking a simple Victoria sponge. This classic dish is bound to delight any party guest you may have and leave them thinking, now there's a person who can cook an easy dish moderately well. And that, I'm afraid, is where the professional cooking show ends because I need a little bit of help with the recipe. First off, you're going to want to preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or gas mark 4. Then you're going to want to grease each of your trays. Very simple, just a knob of butter. Spread it around and make sure you get into the nooks and crannies and all the way around of whatever tray you're using. Next up you take your butter and your sugar and you cream them together in a mixing bowl. Perfect. Take your four eggs and lightly beat them together and then add them a bit at a time to the mixture. Carry on stirring until everything's a nice even consistency. You then want to take your vanilla extract and add a couple of teaspoons. Next thing you're going to want to do is start to fold in your flour just a little bit at a time. Sometimes you might want to add just a splash of milk to make sure the consistency is right. Right, while that's in the oven cooking, I'm going to take a moment to prepare the filling for the inside of the cake. I'm going for a simple butter icing and jam combo, but the opportunities are really endless here. It's chocolate spread, golden syrup, uh, if you're feeling really, really classy, cream and fresh fruit. But I'm a uni student, I couldn't afford any of that nonsense. Anyway, butter icing, you want your butter, some icing sugar. Try and do it a bit slower than I just did and then it won't go all over the table. And I'm going for a couple more teaspoons of vanilla extract because I like vanilla. Just stir them all together again. <laughs> I've just read I should actually have added half the ice and sugar, beat it, and then added the other half, and it would have probably made things a lot easier. But also a lot less fun. We're just going to carry on beating this until we get a nice, smooth consistency. I feel now would be a good time to mention I'm not actually sure what the cake's going to come out like, because just after I put them in and turned off this camera, my flatmate came into the kitchen and turned the cooker off. So that's fun. Well, it's certainly starting to smell good in here, so I think it's time to check on the cakes. Yes, between an entire block of 30 people, not one of us owns a pair of oven gloves. I'm not really sure why there's a hole in the bottom of them, but all in all, I'd say they're not a bad attempt. Now we've just got to wait for them to cool before I can decorate them. Luckily, here's one I made earlier. Right, let's get icing. And then we're going to take our second slice and cover it in jam. I've got a little bit of a mess to clear up now, but I'll see you next week. So, there it is. Admittedly not the best looking cake ever, but I'm sure what it lacks in looks, it more than makes up for in taste. Right, well, that's a lot from me this week. I'm afraid I'm not letting any of you guys decide what I'll be doing next week again because someone here has told me a brilliant idea and although it's not on the list, it should be. If it was, it would probably be titled Do Something Stupid That You're Going To Regret For The Next Couple Of Weeks. But hey, I'm always game for a laugh. Anyway. Please carry on leaving your questions down there and if you haven't done so already please click subscribe and check out that video over there. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got some cake to eat. What? Stop looking at me like that.